Hi everyone, uh, welcome and let's uh, start the class. Let's pray before we get into today's discussion. And uh, Sri Radha, could you please pray? You can't. Oh, so I can't give my mic also. Then maybe uh, we will ask somebody from the online batch to please lead in prayer. Okay, so uh, can anyone kindly unmute and pray, please? Hello. Are you able to hear me? Yes, Nina, we can hear you. Gracious, loving Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this day and for giving us this time to come to you and to your feet. Lord, even as we learn about the prophetic, Lord, uh, in this class, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will open our eyes of understanding, uh, that we may understand all the wonderful things that there are in this gift uh, we come at Pastor Nancy and each one of us, Lord, that we may grow and draw closer to you, even through this time of learning and teaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Nina. We are now in Chapter 8 and we are looking at some practical aspects as far as the use or operation of the gifts of the Spirit are concerned. So the first section here says spiritual gifts need to be stirred up. Uh, and as we uh, understand in any beverage, you know, when we put maybe a spoon of sugar, it needs to be stirred up for the taste to um, actually be there. So similarly, when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, which are activated in us, okay, we also need to stir it up. Then it flows better. Uh, where do we get this thought from? Paul wrote to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14, he said, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. So he is reminding him that uh, if Timothy does not use the gift that he has, then what does it what does that reflect as? Neglect. Okay, not using the gift is neglect. Okay, now Paul again he writes to Timothy in Second Timothy chapter one verse six, where he says, "Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands." So, is there a possibility to neglect? the gifts that we already carry this could be with regard to the gifts of the holy spirit it could be with regard to any other gifts that god has given us we could neglect so you know that's a danger that we must be aware of and he says stir up the gift what is stir up stir up as we said you know to to um, cause it to come alive or if if we want to use a better phrase like Kindle the rekindle the fire. Okay, the fire is very low, but what happens when we put you know some more uh, uh, wood and we we just put some more fuel? It kind of stirs up and the fire becomes brighter and stronger. So in the same way, when it comes to the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we must not neglect it. Uh, what is neglect? Neglect is treating it lightly. Like only sometimes we think of the gifts, sometimes we use the gifts, most of the times we, we are not bothered, we are not intentional about the operation of the gifts. Then it remains in the shelf, right? We all know we have gadgets that uh, maybe we bought thinking, oh, we are going to use it, we'll use it a lot, and then we put it in the cupboard. If you don't use it for many, many, many uh, weeks and months, it may even lose its capacity or it may lose the you know the power with which it can work if you're using it regularly so it's very similar for us we may carry the uh, capacity to prophesy but because of neglect what happens is the uh, ability to prophesy can even diminish 
Okay. Now, why do we neglect? What do you think are some of the reasons we neglect the operation of the gifts of the spirit, especially prophecy? Why? Why do people neglect it? Yeah, fear is a, one of the main reasons because we are afraid of making mistakes. So then we never try only. So fear is one of the main reasons. Second could be um, ignorance. We don't understand the importance of it. And so we don't operate in it. So fear and lack of understanding. These two can be the main reasons why people are neglecting. When we neglect, the gift is not strong in us. Is it there? Yeah, maybe we have uh, seen it activated. Okay, we have received it, baptism in the Holy Spirit. We have received the gift, but it's very small. It's tiny. It's the fire is just a little bit. It's burning. It's not strong. So we got to make it strong. How to make it strong? Um, all these things. When we overcome the aspects that cause us to neglect, so we overcome our fear. We increase in our knowledge. Okay, uh, and uh, we could also say that. Many times when we operate in one of the gifts, it can stir up other gifts. Okay, this is, uh, I, I think there's no scripture and verse to, to confirm that. But in our personal experience, we see that. So let's say we want to move in pro the prophetic. Uh, we want to release words of knowledge. When you start praying in the spirit, okay, when you start praying in tongues, so, some most of the people, at least I've heard this from most people, that a prophecy flows better when you're praying in the spirit. So you take time to stir up one gift, another gift begins to flow in a stronger way. So that's also one of the ways to stir it up. So we've got to stir it up and not neglect the gift. Okay, so that means we should all take. Any opportunity that we get to prophesy, it's good. You know, you take that uh, step and uh, start to move in it. So that's the way to make it stronger. Uh, but if we say that, yeah, 10 years ago, once I prophesied, I have the gift. Uh, it's true we have the gift, but the gift is not strong anymore. Okay, so regularly we must operate in the gift. If there are any questions, you just stop me. I'll... Uh, a stop and answer but uh, i'll keep going on even online batch please do ask because these are very um, practical topics that we are discussing next spiritual gifts can be activated and imparted just now we read paul writing to timothy isn't it the gift that was given to you by the laying on of hands so what does that refer to transfer or the new word that we are also fascinated by impartation you know impartation ha can happen because paul is talking about impartation uh, in fact when he writes to the roman church um, he states that you know i want to come to you so that i can impart a gift to you romans 1 verse 11 so, uh, let me read it out he says i long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. So this tells us that gifts can be imparted. So if there is somebody who is carrying that gift by faith, they can impart. Uh, those who desire, remember Paul said desire. When we de earnestly desire, we can pull and receive the impartation of the gift. Okay, and we've studied all other aspects about what measure it will be transferred in. You can't become like that person. So many things. But it's true that gift can be imparted. Okay, then uh, we can also activate the gift. Activate means, um, see, when the Holy Spirit comes, baptism of the Holy Spirit we receive, the Holy Spirit baptizes us and he carries all the gifts, isn't it? Uh, but then, in as we journey with the Lord, these gifts begin to show up one by one. Or we use the term activate. We probably went for prayer or we heard a teaching on prophecy and the prophetic gift in us got stirred up and it got activated, meaning it started working. 
at that point. So can the gifts of the spirit be activated? Yes. Okay, they can either become operational the very moment we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's possible. Most of the time, people speak in tongues. Um, uh, but along with tongues, maybe they can manifest prophecy also or any other gift also. So they get activated. Uh, and uh, we've already seen, as far as uh, the Old Testament is concerned, that uh, even if gifts are there, even if, uh, you know, let's say the grace of God is there on somebody to be a prophet, training is needed, guiding is needed. Equipping is needed. That is why the school of the prophets was established. So here is our understanding. Gifts can be imparted. Gifts can be activated. But there is a need for developing the gift or maturing the gift. Fine. So we, as we are trained, we become, if we uh, consider prophecy particularly when we are trained in the prophetic operation of the prophetic will become more effective will become more accurate and we use the term flow right meaning without any hindrance we are just able to operate like that smooth we can operate in the prophetic but to go to that level or we are simply using the term maturing of the gift maturing of the gift or developing of the gift it's going to take some time it's going to take some practice. It's going to take some learning. Okay. So uh, these are all uh, realities in scripture for us. So gifts can be imparted, activated, but they need to be developed and matured. Okay. Next, we release spiritual gifts through faith. This is quite clear. We see um, the scripture from Romans 12 verse 6, what, which says, having then gifts, Differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. So we have received the gift or we have received the grace of God. Uh, various graces. All of us have different, different capacities, measures of the grace of God. Now, when it comes to the exercise of the gift of prophecy, especially, uh, you know, Paul is saying, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. So if faith is little, we'll prophesy little. If faith is a little bit more, we'll prophesy a little bit more. If faith is great, we'll prophesy much more. So then what should we work on to prophesy more? Faith, yeah. So when faith becomes stronger and stronger, then one is able to, what we are saying, flow in the operation of the prophetic. Okay. Um, all right. So we've got to remember that, that we should not forget this, that faith is what will drive the release of the gifts of the spirit. Okay. Because uh, what could happen, we can start in faith. Then maybe once we reach a certain level, uh, if we start depending on other things, you know, like we just say, okay, no, you have to do it like this, this technique, this procedure. We move from faith to uh, becoming very, um, you know, what can I say, more flesh in the flesh, trying to put it forward in the flesh, make it stronger through your flesh. It won't work. So when we start the journey in faith, we should keep the faith, maintain the faith, keep moving forward in faith. Okay. So faith is so very important and um, the gifts will operate through faith. Okay. Now uh, let's, what is the opposite of that? If there is no faith, I, I'll just make this one statement. Let's say if there is no faith or less faith, the opposite is true. Prophecy will not operate freely. Okay. So that also is, is a challenge. We said fear can stop us, but also lack of faith can stop us when it comes to moving in the uh, gift of prophecy. Uh, yes, uh, Anand, you wanted to say, state something? Mm -hmm. Which one? Yeah. Mm. 
Ja, ja. Mm, fleshly thing could be um, fleshly efforts. I think more of, you know, uh, the attitude that we carry maybe like when we, let's say, operate in the gifts of the spirit and then we get a lot of uh, uh, affirmation from the people. Okay. So it can also happen that, you know, I, I think of myself as, okay, I'm somebody, I, I can do this, uh, I'm doing it well, and I'll continue. So that I'm switching from faith to self-dependence. That's more of a fleshly attitude, where I, because of my past experience, all I'm doing right now is, okay, I'm at a level right now, the gift will anyway operate, and, uh, you know, I, I'll just go ahead with it. And my dependence on God can also shift. So it's very subtle when we we come to a little more stable place. It's very subtle. All these small little things like self-dependence or um, the, um, you know, the approval of the people, uh, that becomes very important for us. So when, let's say, you go for a meeting, then people will expect, oh, this pastor is coming. They are so prophetic. They are so powerful in the prophetic. So then we start to think I have to, like it has to manifest. So if I'm not making the waves, you know, in a given meeting, they'll think pastor is very boring or, you know, the, the spirit is not operational anymore. But what if you don't get prophetic words? What will you do? You know, then we switch to flesh. We can start to say something, you know, like uh, um, calculated guesses. We can do that. God will bless you. God will because now your your reputation is at stake. People are watching you. Okay, but this is all very difficult when you're in those places. No, really, you're like, okay, whom am I trusting in? You you've got to, and maybe you may walk out of that meeting. With people saying, oh, not that powerful. Next time we should call somebody else. It's okay. No problem. Don't switch to the flesh. Got it? So it's like that, Tan, and very subtle it is. And so from faith, suddenly you can switch off to something else. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If they are if there's a reaction on their face, then we we say, ah, good, you're hitting the point. <laughs> but maybe not, maybe not. Yeah. So all these things, no, it's, uh, but we learn, we learn and we'll, we, faith means dependence should always be on God, always be on God. So sometimes we are very accurate, but we don't find any response. So that, uh, we'll see later when, it is uh, operation in the gifts of the spirit or any ministry gift. Being strong in who we are in Christ is so foundational because nothing can shake you. If you're strong in, in who you are in Christ, you know, as a child of God, if people reject you as a minister also, it's okay. I'm a child of God. You know, that is my greatest thing. So that security in Christ, uh, we need to establish that because... You see, like the approval of people is, it's like the waves of the sea. Once it'll rise, once it'll fall. You can't depend on it. Yeah. Okay. So some things like that. Is it, is it clear? Does it make sense? Okay, fine. Okay. So here in our notes, um, we are touching upon some basics of the gift of prophecy. I'm on page 130. And um, what are they? First basic thing about prophecy, what would you say if I tell you, okay, tell me something basic about prophecy. Uh, reference? Very good, very good. Okay, I think class is, course is over. <laughs> but good, good. This is the main thing that we have to say. Okay, this is the basic of prophecy. Prophecy is to strengthen, to encourage, and to comfort the people. And we all, all believers can move in this 
basic or simple gift of prophecy. But of course, in the prophetic, we have things like correction, direction, judgment, which generally we would say somebody who's in the who's uh, uh, who has the grace gift or somebody who's in the office of a prophet will operate at that level. Okay, uh, so that is one thing. Yes, sir, Prince. Mm. Office. No, 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 no. So it's one thing below office of prophet. Mm. Okay. Next one is all can prophesy. So how do we validate this? There's a passage in our notes from First Corinthians chapter 14. They have selected verses here. Uh, and as I read each verse, I'll explain. So 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, it says, Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. And we've already uh, stated that this statement is for everyone. So if love is for all believers, desire that you may prophesy is for all believers. Clear. Verse 5, Paul says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. So what does he mean? I wish that all of you spoke in tongues. I wish that all of you prophesied. So he also has this understanding that everybody can prophesy. Verse 24. But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all he is convicted by all. See there, all, all, all. So if all prophesy, he doesn't say only those who are in the ministry, grace, gift, uh, or office prophesy, because only they can prophesy, right? But he says all prophesy, meaning even the simple believer can prophesy. So once again, you see, you, there are three, at least three scriptures. Usually we need... A minimum of two scriptures that are saying the same thing. There are three scriptures now. Let's look at the fourth one. Uh, 31. For you can all prophesy one by one. That all may learn and all may be encouraged. So he's bringing in order to prophecy. So imagine in a situation where all want to prophesy. This whole class wants to prophesy. Okay, online everybody unmutes all of you. All of you start prophesying. So as a teacher, I say, hey, wait, wait, wait. I know all of you want to prophesy. Please do it one by one. I'll call, you know, roll call. Okay, now Nina, you, you do it. And Anand, you do it. And, you know, Jackin, you do it. So order. He's establishing order. And he's saying, verse 31, all can prophesy one by one. That all may learn and all may be encouraged. So there is a fourth passage that is saying all, all. Verse 39, therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. So he's encouraging the operation of the uh, gift of prophecy and the gift of tongues. He says, don't stop people from doing this. Let them prophesy. Let them speak in tongues. Okay, next. Let's look at another very, very practical thing about prophecy. Uh, we prophesy in part. So 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9, it says, For we know in part and we prophesy in part. So think of it this way. You know, we all are aware of a jigsaw puzzle. And uh, we put pieces of that puzzle together to get the full picture. But when we are starting the game, okay, we have no clue what this is about. Uh, it's only when we put a few pieces together that we get an idea. When we prophesy, it's like that. Sometimes we as believers have an expectation that a prophet uh, will probably know everything. You know, sometimes we are scared to go near the prophet. Oh my goodness, he'll know everything. What I did, what I ate, what where I went to. So you're so scared to even, like you just cross from that side. <laughs> but that's not true. Even prophet will not know everything. And many times when people prophesy, um, it's in that moment of um, experiencing the anointing. So if you go back and ask, 
uh, we go back and tell someone. I've also told people, Pastor, you remember you said this? Uh, oh, I said, oh, okay, okay. They won't remember also because they said it when they were praying and they, they also don't recall how many things they've said about how many people. So it's all in part. We prophesy in part. Uh, we know in part. So we prophesy in part. So if we go with an expectation, let's say uh, some prophet has come and we are going there and we are saying, Lord, today you have to tell me everything. Okay. Everything that I'm going to do, you have to tell. God will be like, what is this? <laughs> How everything I can tell in one, you know, prophetic meeting. It doesn't work like that. Or suppose we are ministering and we say, God, I'm going to pray. I'm going to lay hands on this person. You should tell me everything about this man. It can't happen. God can only reveal small little parts here and there. Okay. But whatever it is, we can faithfully release it. Okay. Maybe one thing we came to know, two things, three things. That's not our worry. Accuracy, right? Effectiveness, uh, effective communication, so that that person is blessed, they apply correctly. Our focus is more on that. So we won't be able to um, tell everything uh, to everyone. And uh, that way, if you want to impress people, no, like, wait, I'll prophesy now. Forget it. You can't, you can't do the whole thing all the time. Some Sometimes, yes, I know some prophets, you know, they may, they may uh, tell so much and it feels like, oh, they've read my whole life story and they've shared it. But even if they say so many things, it can't cover everything. Okay. So that is another fact that we must settle in our minds. Uh, let's move on. All prophecy must be judged. So remember, we stated Paul brought order to the prophesying and said, do it like this, do it one by one, uh, you know, and uh, when uh, an unbeliever comes, better that you prophesy than speak in tongues, because he won't understand what you all are saying. So he brought order in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. In that order, in verse 29, he says, let two or three prophets speak. Let the others judge. Okay. Let two or three prophets speak. Now those who are listening, he is uh, inviting them to judge the prophetic word. It sounds like, how can you judge when God is speaking? You know, how can people judge? Isn't it? But we'll understand this in its proper manner. Again, he writes to the Thessalonian church, Paul, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 19 through 21. He says, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good. Earlier he said, judge. Now he's saying, test. After you test, take what is good, leave what you don't want. So our understanding is when we prophesy, it is possible that some parts of what are being spoken are not pure. Okay, how, how do we get this? Is the gift pure? Yes. Okay, genuinely when we hear from God, that is pure, that is powerful. And when we communicate it in the right way, it will impact the life of the people. But what happens is, because we are human beings, if we are not careful, if we are not, um, you know, well practiced, sometimes our own thoughts and ideas will, uh, it will kind of color the prophetic word. Okay. Like, I'll tell you something very silly. We are praying. There are lots of people. You've gone there for the first time. You see one person with suit boot. You just imagine he's a rich man. Okay. And then you start prophesying. You know, you are your company. God will. He'll say, sorry, I don't have any company. <laughs> I don't have any car. You're like, oh, really? I, I thought you look quite rich. But that's my own bias. It's not God speaking. Or you look at another person. They look so poor. 
and you're like okay god will meet your needs he's like i'm actually a millionaire <laughs> like oh really how i i'm so sorry because that's your own bias my own bias about people so the human biases also sometimes get activated and uh, our thoughts our ideas so we release them in the name of prophecy which paul knew and that's why he's saying it's okay don't worry uh, you speak whatever you need to release you release it to the best of your ability it's always safer when there are other believers who can judge they can judge and say what you said about this about their future that is correct but what you said about you know what they're going through that is wrong okay because they can identify the biases uh, because of people's own thoughts and ideas so that means all prophecy needs to be judged even if somebody says thus says the lord you know you are going to do this you are going to receive it why because we just saw in first thessalonians 5 it says do not despise prophecies meaning we we will not neglect it somebody said something okay praise the lord you know i'll receive that but i have to wait because i need to test it i can't act on it immediately got it so then i'll pray and i'll say lord give me confirmation this this per person is saying that i have to go into full time ministry you give me confirmation wait on the lord judge it right slowly we may get the confirmation god will speak to us then it makes sense to take the big step and you say okay fine i and god has spoken to me many times i'm sure that he wants me to quit my job and go into full time ministry i will do it okay the moment we hear a prophet say something when we act on it then we are not judging it we are not testing it got it that can be very dangerous because as we have said gift is pure vessel may be impure okay no matter how much how strong they are in the lord we don't know right like what biases they carry maybe it's their own thought we don't know maybe they they've seen us as a very uh, good believer strong in the lord and their desire they are speaking god is calling you to full time ministry how do you know i can't make my life decision based on what a prophet is saying or you know a brother is prophesying so nice when they prophesy do not despise prophecies take it and usually what we say is put it on the shelf okay keep it on the shelf and trust god for confirmations say okay lord now you speak to me you confirm so that is what judging is then when we wait on the lord <coughs> excuse me and god confirms then act on it now we may also understand that some parts of what that person said are uh, not true okay so i remember this uh, uh, right after my my uh, uh, you know like my higher studies i had my own ambition for my career so then i had something in mind and at that time i was working in like community health department and i was go wanting to go into that community health field in a certain way uh, and once i had gone for one meeting and those people knew who i am and what i have done and what i want to do and all that so then one brother he started prophesying and he started saying all kinds of things about how you know he is seeing me wearing a white coat going into the villages and this and that and th i'm going to do this i'm going to do that like basically in the area of community health but now that i see my life it's so different from what he said uh yes so for some part i did that i did that for some part but then the whole story changed okay now imagine if i had held on only to that and when god is leading me in other ways like full time ministry this and that i say no 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 you know that part, brother told that tony has to happen but there was no he was the only person who said that i didn't have any other confirmation but when it came to you know full time ministry you know, i had lots of confirmation so then what did we see there test all things hold fast to what is true that means some things have to be discarded okay so then i just discarded it i said okay fine you know leave it 
maybe that's not god's plan for my life i will embrace what god wants for me because that's where i will thrive okay sometimes it's a hard choice that you you make but okay if that's the best that's the best we'll take it so we can discard you know certain uh, words that have been spoken um now the next one is uh, that prophesying when we prophesy uh, we are in control okay uh, we have about 3 minutes left so maybe i will pick it up in the next class i'll give us a little bit of time to ask questions based on what we have discussed till now if there are questions let's take it up otherwise we can close okay quite clear uh oh, great fine then let's uh, just pray and we will wrap up uh, i want to request one of our online students to please pray today pastor shall i pray yes yes jackin please pray father god thank you lord Thank you for this time, Lord God, where you have been teaching us, Lord God, from your word, Lord. Father, each of us desire for the gift of this prophecy, Lord God. Father, help us, Lord God, to understand why you are giving this gift to each of us, Lord God, and help us to truly follow your heart, Lord God. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you have chosen already, Lord God, and you've already set apart, Lord God. for this gift lord god and for the office of the prophet lord god we pray lord god whomever you choose lord god we will be diligent in what you have called us to do father god and every word what you are teaching us lord god help us lord god to by the holy spirit's power lord god engrave it engrave it in our hearts oh god so that we will live that life that you called us to live oh father god the purpose that you've called each of us to live every part of what you're teaching us lord god may we be led by the holy spirit lord god teach us oh god in jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 man thank you jackin thank you everyone uh, remember to stir up the gift okay we'll discuss further on friday thank you bye for now thank you